Hi, and welcome to the Electronics and Programming Beginner's Guide. Today we're going to take a look at a new video editing software I've been using, and I plan to completely replace using a video pad with this new software. It's called DaVinci Resolve. It's made by Blackmagic Design, and what makes DaVinci Resolve absolutely awesome is this is a professional level editing tool. Uh, this video uh, editor is actually used for creating, you know, uh, big screen motion pictures. And the other awesome thing about it is it's free. Yeah, the free version is, you know, limited to co uh, compared to the version that you buy, the professional version. Uh, the professional version costs a thousand dollars. But the free version is limited to 1080p video, and it doesn't have all of the uh, special effects features that the full version does. And those are about the only limitations for it being free. With VideoPad, VideoPad I think cost about $34. Uh, the problem I really had with it is that for that $34, uh, you would get a version now and you would get any new version released I think within the next three months and then after that you effectively had to buy the software again and you would receive new versions for the next three months effectively after buying it the first time and using it for a year or two it, it became outdated and I started having problems with it, etc. And then I stumbled across DaVinci Resolve. Uh, there was a, a little write-up on it in my favorite computer magazine, Maximum PC. And so I decided to try it. And after I tried it, I loved it. Let's go ahead and fire up DaVinci Resolve. And I can't say I have the most powerful computer you know, on the face of this planet, but, uh, you know, it, it launches reasonably quickly. It's not, uh, you know, it's not a dog. It doesn't really eat up the resources. So now what we see here is a few of the projects that I've done previously. I made a new intro here. Uh, I, I used this to put together the 4-in-1 charger video, and actually, uh, as a test, uh, this video didn't actually get published. Uh, the video we're going to put together now, I actually did use DaVinci Resolve to put together. It's the tripod video. Uh, but I'm going to effectively recreate uh, stitching it together for you guys. To get started, you want to hit... Uh, you can either just open up the this untitled project that's new, or you can hit New Project and call it Tripod. Like that. Go ahead and create it. Now that you have the new project created, go ahead and double click on it to open it. This is what DaVinci Resolve generally looks like. DaVinci Resolve has a pretty simple workflow and that's four tabs down here. Media, Edit, Color, and Deliver. In Media, you import all of your media. In Edit, you edit the video together. In Color, you do color correction. And then in Delivery, you export the video at you know, that you've created. To get started, let's import some media. Let me go ahead and grab my media files, and these are it right here. I actually went through a whole bunch of pain uh, getting uh, this media to work. Let me grab one and play it for you. As you can see, the UV meters over here are showing you sound, and you can hear me talk. Uh, natively, my Sony camera uh, does not is not supported by uh, DaVinci Resolve, and I had to go through you know jump through all kinds of hoops to get the media imported properly. And I will actually do a separate video on that to uh, try and save anybody who's working you know decided to work with DaVinci Resolve and a Sony camera. But uh, once we have the media pulled up, we can go ahead and effectively just, you know, con uh, do, 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 shift, and then uh, drag the media down into the media pool. 
what you'll see up here is uh, a dialogue that lets you know that your project and your videos don't match as far as like the, the, the format and the frame rate. And this is asking you, do you want me to change uh, the project to match your videos? And we totally do. So go ahead and hit change. And all of those will get imported like that. And then I also want to grab an intro like that. That's my new intro. I made it using DaVinci Resolve. It wasn't as intuitive as I was hoping it would be, but it still did a really nice job of the intro. The reason why you have a whole section dedicated to importing media is that DaVinci Resolve, as I mentioned previously, is specifically designed to work with a big screen motion picture type movies. And whereas I have me, well, I think I have 36 clips in this video plus the uh, intro, you know, a, a big screen motion picture could have thousands, if not hundreds of thousands of clips. And this media organization system actually does a really good job of uh, organizing all of that for you. The way it does this is uh, with every clip, you can obviously name it and you can have metadata with the clip like that. Uh, but also uh, there's uh, different properties and descriptions and all kinds of things you can enter about your media. And then you can drop this media into bins over here to organize it even further. And then finally you can have smart bins, which are bins that effectively search your other bins and using either the metadata or something along those lines, it's the, uh, it can sort those into the smart bins. I think for the video examples uh, you know, that are available for this, they usually use uh, drone shots. So you'll have a scene that uh, incorporates, you know, regular shot footage and drone shot footage, and then uh, in the smart bin, you sort, you know, you put in drone shots, and uh, it will pull all of the uh, drone shots in the regular bins into the smart bins. It's it's a very very powerful tool. Also, as I mentioned uh, just now, DaVinci Resolve has a whole lot of tutorial videos available for it. DaVinci Resolve is incredibly powerful. What I ran into with VideoPad is that uh, the videos for it were starting to get kind of outdated as they increased the version of uh, uh, the software. And there weren't actually that many of them. There were, you know, like a core group that kind of got you started, but nothing really, really uh, detailed. With DaVinci Resolve, that's not the case. There are hundreds of different videos from uh, different YouTubers, from uh, Blackmagic Design themselves. And these videos constantly keep getting updated. Like... Uh, DaVinci Resolve got updated from version 11 to version 12, and there were a bunch of version 11 videos, and there's a bunch of version 12 videos, and now it got updated to version 12.5. And again, a whole bunch more videos popped up. So the software not only is well maintained by Blackmagic Design because it's free, but also the videos are well maintained on how to use uh, all of its features, and the software has a lot of features. Now that we've got our uh, video imported, let's go ahead and, and head over to the Edit tab. Clicking on the Edit tab here will take you to the Edit screen. The Edit screen is fairly simple. Over here on your left, you have all of your bins. And here's our bin with uh, all of our clips in it. Then you have, this is a preview window for uh, the current clip that you're working on. This is the preview window for the entire uh, uh, assembled video. And uh, this is your timeline. And you really have quite a few options as to how you want to do your stuff. You can either take something and drag it into the preview clip here. And then you can play it. And uh, you can uh, trim it, you know, set your uh, endpoints, you know, your mark in and mark out points, and then you can drag it over here, 
and uh, these options pop up over here so you can I usually use append at end or you can drag it directly into the timeline here like that lots of different ways of doing it so first I want to drop in the intro and then I want to go ahead and drop in all of my video clips hold shift and that will bring them up and as I mentioned I usually like to go append at end and all of my clips are sequential and because all of my clips are sequential, uh, they get dropped in sequentially. So 109, there we go. Uh, let's skip one. 109, this is 109, 110, 111, 112, and so forth. The reason I like to do it this way instead of doing it one clip at a time is with the tools that DaVinci Resolve have, has, you can very quickly stitch together your video. Let's uh, do some examples here. So first you can see with the audio that there's a big silent period and then they start talking over here. So I know that I need to trim off this uh, beginning portion here. And that's very easy with this tool right here the trim edit mode with the trim edit mode tool it's concept context sensitive so depending on where on the splice you have see this will move an entire video around this only moves the edge this moves the other edge and then this moves the splice point so what I can do is go ahead and move this edge and when they drag it over I am trimming off that portion of the video like that boom it was that simple now I don't want to fade the video in, I don't particularly care about that, but I do care about fading the audio in, and there is a fantastic tool for that, and that's this guy here, the normal edit mode. See the difference between the uh, trim edit and the normal edit, and let me show you, is if I grab it here, see it looks very similar to the trim edit mode, but if I trim it, I get this big old gap here in the middle, let me control Z to undo. Whereas when you trim with the uh, trim edit mode, it scrolls the video to fill in the gap. Like that. So now let's go to get the normal edit mode tool. And this little uh, white thing appears in the corner. If you grab that little white thing and drag it over, what you get is an audio fade in from the video. You can also actually do a video fade in like that. So if we watch it. Hi, and welcome to the Electronics and Programming Beginner's Guide. Oh, sorry about that. It doesn't, it, it renders it on, there we go. And welcome to the Electronics and Programming Which uh, maybe we'll leave the fade in there. But uh, DaVinci Resolve renders on the fly, which is both good and bad at the same time. Uh, what's bad about it is that let's say, sometimes it'll hiccup like that and you have to, you know, watch it again. Hi, and to uh, but what's good about it is you don't have to wait for video previews to render, where with uh, a video pen you were constantly waiting for videos to render. Now that we've edited our, our first little piece here, we can go ahead and hit the next next you know, they like to call it next and the cursor here will jump over to the next splice point between two videos and you can see that I have an empty uh, a silent spot here and a silent spot here and now I can grab the uh, trim edit mode tool and go ahead and drag this guy over like that drag this guy over like that and grab the uh, normal edit mode and unfortunately you do have to move the cursor out of the way because it gets in the way sometimes and go ahead and fade in the audio here like that and uh, let's try fading in the video a little bit as well just to give it a little smoother transition and see what it looks like so let's take a look the first tripod we're taking a look at this is so let's take a look yeah, I'm not sure I'm necessarily a fan of the, the fade in here. Let me go ahead and take that off. I kind of prefer it without the fade. Let's take a look. 
I kind of feel the transition that way is smoother, but the audio transition does really help because if you look at the audio levels here, it was actually quieter in the first clip and a little louder in the second clip as far as the background noise is concerned. And now we can go ahead and hit the next button to jump over to the next one. <clears throat> go ahead and grab the trim edit and started with and then upgrade later. Cut off a little bit of audio there. Go ahead and fix that a little bit. Move that guy. Uh, one nice thing about DaVinci Resolve is you have this magnet here, the, the snapping magnet. And when this is on, like it is now, uh, it will snap to some certain critical points. But if you turn it off, the snapping goes away in case you want to do a really fine grain change and the snapping is getting in the way. Grab the normal edit mode tool and fade our audio like that. And go ahead and jump to the next one. So the this goes fairly quickly. I'm not going to do the entire clip completely because that's just too time consuming and I don't want to bore you. But I'll do maybe one more to sort of show you. Oops. See, sometimes that happens. I'm still in the normal edit, and I forget to grab the trim edit tool. So sometimes what I'll do is I'll do all of the trim editing all the way through the video, and then I'll grab the normal edit mode tool and work my way through the audio backwards. Just depends on how I feel that day. By the way, uh, I'm going to go ahead and finish trimming up the whole video, and then jump over to the color tab. See you in a few. Now through the magic of television, I've gotten the clip all edited together and we can jump over to the next tab in our workflow, which is the color tab. The color tab is actually where DaVinci Resolve gets its humble beginnings from. The reason is that a uh, DaVinci Resolve was specifically made for color correction. You can take a video clip and change the color in it to make it seem nicer, to clean things up, etc. The color tab is actually the, the most powerful thing that DaVinci Resolve has. Let me show you some things about it. You can grab a clip. And with the clip, you get uh, the scope drawings. You can look at a bunch of different things here in the this panel down here. And what scope tells you is the color distribution and color brightness or color concentration across the video. So the reds from here to here is the video uh, frame that you're looking at. And the brightness level goes top to bottom and the frame goes left to right. So on the right side, there's a little bit of red down here. On the left side, there's a bunch of red over here, and et cetera, et cetera. And then you can take these uh, four color wheels here and go ahead and tweak them around. And really, it's a, I'm not an expert at this by any means. My understanding is that offset changes the whole video. Uh, gain changes the brights, gamma changes the mid-tones, and uh, lift changes the, the darker tones. So for example, I can take this video and tweak it a little bit because you can see blue is a little low compared to the green and the red. I can drag this over this way. Give myself a little more green, a little less red, like that. And the color of the video actually improves quite a bit. Uh, the nodes up here, you can turn the node off and see the difference. It's kind of yellowish, and now it's kind of brighter. It's actually a, a pretty decent tool for doing this. And if I really wanted to, I could uh, go ahead and reset my gain tweak here. I can. You can do one clip at a time, or what you can do is select everything, right click on it and go add uh, into new group. We'll make this group 
two like that and then up here you can go uh, select group uh, preclip like that and then you can tweak the the gain on everything let me let's say you grab this one maybe that's the better one to grab And now every single clip gets the same kind of edit. There are way, way more tasty morsels that are hidden in this color tab because you can, let's see here, do all kinds of different color correction stuff. Uh, the tracker here allows you to do a uh, stabilization of a video all kinds of different things that I don't even know about. Once you've got your video color corrected or tweaked however you would like, you can jump over to delivery and now you can take your clip and export it into a video you have effectively two uh, couple of options. You can do uh, render entire timeline and that'll do everything or you can render from an in and out range which uh, lets you ed uh, export just a little section of your video. I'll generally do entire timeline and then up here you have your uh, options for exporting the video so you know YouTube, Yemo, Final Cut, Premiere X, uh, whole bunch of professional formats uh, grab YouTube 1080 here and uh, it will export it in QuickTime H264 I tend to prefer to export in MPEG 4 like that and I'll export 1080 and for whatever reason they call my camera a 60 frame a second camera but it's actually 59.94 frames and they round up that extra uh, uh, six hundredth of a frame whatever you know best quality etc and then uh, you can either export uh, everything as a single clip one big video or you can render the individual clips maybe if you're making a DVD or something like that you can export it you know little chunks at a time and then go ahead and jump over to audio and we you can choose not to export the audio if you don't want to and then finally jump over to uh, file here and we can go ahead and name it let's you know let's name a tripod like that and grab a location to store it in let's go put it in blog videos tripod like that and now that we've got all of our uh, bits and pieces selected we can go ahead and add to render queue and you can put a bunch of jobs into the render queue and when you're finally ready you can hit start render and your video will render this has been a very very basic introduction to DaVinci Resolve I do not claim to be an expert in DaVinci Resolve I've only recently started using it uh, but I hope this uh, shows you how powerful DaVinci Resolve is and how nice of a tool it is for being free. It is isn't very, very difficult to beat this for free, even compared to with like uh, Adobe Premiere or uh, Sony Vegas, some of the other software that's available for editing. The editing tool is actually kind of an addendum to the color correction tool. As I mentioned earlier, the color correction tool is the uh, meat and potatoes of DaVinci Resolve. But what uh, Blackmagic Design is trying to do is get more people to use the software beginning to end. And that's why they're, they've added far more uh, uh, powerful ed uh, editing and media tools into it and those tools are only going to get better from now on if you have any questions or comments you're welcome to uh, put them down below uh, and as always thank you for watching